In this lesson, we're going to be talking about ground and excited state electrons. So we'll be talking about their configuration and the differences in the excited and ground state. So get excited. <laughs> <laughs> so using your periodic table, we're going to be talking about electron configurations right now. So an electron configuration describes the electron arrangement within an atom. This right here, as the arrows are pointing out to you, these are all the different electron configurations. They're all located under the atomic number on your periodic table. And you have to know this, that the sum, if you add up all those electron configurations per element, it's equal to the atomic number. So ground state is found on the reference tables, as we just said. All elements on the periodic table are in ground state, so they're in their lowest possible energy levels. And the arrangement of electrons around the nucleus are shown in the bottom left-hand corner. So if you were to look at magnesium over on your actual periodic table, you would notice it has an electron configuration of 282, two, which means in the first shell, you have two electrons, then you have eight electrons in the second, and then in your outermost shell, you have two of them. Do you remember which one has the lowest energy? Hmm. If you don't remember, you should probably go back to one of our previous videos. Yep. So excited state is when energy is absorbed by those electrons. And the arrangement of the excited state is around the nucleus of an atom, but in a different manner than the ground state. So the way that uh, electrons can absorb this energy is through fire, through electricity, or even through a chemical reaction. Um, and then electrons are going to move up an energy level because they're absorbing that energy. So in the bottom corner, you'll see that magnesium's popped up from the last slide. We had the uh, ground state of 282. And we're saying that if an electron absorbed energy, it's going to move to an excited state, moving one of those electrons to a higher energy level. Now, guys, you only need to move one electron as you see. If you look at the ground state on the left-hand side, you have a configuration of 282. But on the right side for excited, you now have a configuration of 2811. And again, the further away from the nucleus you get, the more energy that electron holds. So if it absorbs energy, it has to move further away. So what is the difference between ground and excited state, or how do you get there? So in a ground state, energy is going to be absorbed, and as it does that, the electrons will be jumping up a potential energy level. But to go from excited to ground, this is where energy is going to be released, because you want to go back to your normal configuration. So you're releasing that energy, the electrons return to their original positions, and in the process, we make light. So to summarize, from ground to excited, energy is being absorbed. From excited to ground, energy is being released. So here's uh, some rules for writing out an electron, an excited state electron configuration. Um, the first rule, ground states are always on the periodic table of elements. The number of electron is always equal to the atomic number, regardless of excited or ground state. And many combinations of electron configurations exist for the heavier elements. Um, count the numbers, sum of the com count the numbers. Some of the configuration is always going to be equal, again, to that atomic number. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do beryllium with you. Right now, the ground state is 2-2, which means that it has four electrons. And in an excited state, it would be 2-1-1. That's just one possibility. Um, and if you add them up again, it still equals four electrons, which is, again, the atomic number. So pause the video and try the next three.
When you do heavier elements like magnesium, you'll notice that there's multiple different ways of writing these configurations. You can notice that the 8 turns to a 7, and the potential energy level further up goes to a 3. But you can also say that your outermost electron in the energy level also goes one step further, giving you the configuration of 2, 8, 1, 1. Both of these are acceptable because both of these have, one, the correct number of electrons and show an excited state. For carbon, if you count again, 2, 3, and 1, that is 6, and you're noticing that one of the electrons is moving up one energy level. For silicon, there has to be 14 electrons, and again, like the magnesium, because it's a heavier element, we're noticing that there are multiple combinations, but they still all signify the same thing. So remember, there are other configurations that we haven't drawn here, but just know that you really only need to move one. Don't make your life difficult. Just move it one further out.